Do you ever feel like you don't look like you lift? You work out, you go to the gym, you care and put effort into your nutrition, but you still feel like you do not look like you work out. Well, in this video, I'll go over 13 training mistakes that you might be making inside the gym, making it look like you don't lift. If you've never seen my videos before and you don't know who I am, my name is Ted. I'm an online personal trainer and nutrition coach. And I've helped tons of people lose fat, build muscle, and make training and nutrition a part of their life without it becoming their life. And I've seen a ton of mistakes both that I've made in the past, uh, my clients have made, and then other people who have DM'd me or emailed me questions uh, and mistakes that they're making. Mistake making you look like you don't lift, number one is changing too much. The best way to see results inside the gym is to have a realistic plan and set of exercises and then progress those exercises every single week or at least twice a month by adding weight or reps. If you're following a workout program for one or two weeks and then changing it up, what is that doing? It's not giving you the time necessary for you to be progressing in those lifts. If you wanna see better results, stick to the same training program for at least four weeks. And then you could change out the exercises if you want, but even then I would not change out all of the exercises. I would keep the first two to three exercise in each training day the same because those are gonna be the main compound lifts for those days, right? That means they have a high capacity for loading. That means you can keep adding weight or reps every single week for a long ass time. So mistake making it look like you don't lift number one is changing up your workout program too often. Mistake making you look like you don't lift number two is resting between sets. I used to do this all the time when I was younger as well. Let's say you're doing a set of bicep curls, right? You finish the set, you put the weight down, you rest 30 to 60 seconds, then you do another set. You feel like you're working hard, but you're working your cardiovascular system very hard, not your muscles. Your muscles need at least three minutes to recover up to 85 to 90% of its ATP, which your muscles use for energy. So when you're resting 30 to 90 seconds between each set, you're not even gonna be able to produce enough force with your muscles to train them with proper intensity. So if you wanna look like you lift and see better results, rest three minutes between each working set, or if you really can't and you're super busy, take two minutes of rest. Remember, you're training your muscles, not your cardiovascular system. Mistake making it look like you don't lift. Number three is prioritizing cardio over weight training. Shout out to Jordan Syatt for this analogy. Doing cardio or any weight training to burn as many calories as you can is like reading a book as fast as you can, trying to read as many pages as you can. The main purpose of reading a book most of the time is to educate yourself, right? The main purpose of weight training is to get stronger, build more muscle definition, look better naked. And the main purpose of cardio is mental and heart health. So if you're trying to optimize your results, be as efficient as possible, right? You wanna lose fat and build muscle. You'd be better off firstly tracking calories and protein so you can ensure that you're in a calorie deficit to lose the fat. And then weight train three to four times a week to build more muscle definition and sustain the current muscle that you have. And then choose a cardio routine that you could either uh, enjoy or that you can just put up with, right? So walking, biking, swimming, skating, jujitsu, anything, swimming. I think I already said that. Anyways, the choices are endless. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number four is just getting to the end of the rep range. Let's say, for example, you're doing a set of bicep curls to 10 reps. I know it's boring, but just listen. You're just going as fast as possible to get to the end of the rep range, to get to 10, right? So you can be done and you can be resting until your next set. That makes sense, but you're actually missing out on results by doing that, by not controlling the eccentric portion or the negative or the descent of that rep, right? Uh, on a bicep curl, it'd be going down. So the next time you're doing any exercise, try out this counting method for your tempo so you can not only make sure that you're controlling the negative for two to three seconds, but also so you don't lose count of how many reps you're doing. So you're counting to three each time, but the first number is what rep you're on. So it'd go one, two, three, two, two, three, Three, two, three, four, two, three, five, two, three, six, two, three, seven, two, three, just like that. Now you'll actually be weight training instead of just trying to get to the end of the rep range. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number five is 
prioritizing intensity over form, right? This is also called ego lifting. We've all seen in the gym that one guy or girl that's using grunting loudly, right? Using 90% momentum and 10% of their muscle. They always use way too much weight and prioritize how much weight they're using rather than form or mechanics. To keep it consistent and boring, let's say bicep curls again. You see them using a 60 pound dumbbell or maybe you're using a 60 pound dumbbell doing alternating standing dumbbell curls. And you are there just swinging the weight back and forth, just feeding your ego. But they'd get way better results in a faster time frame if they cut the weight in half or even more and actually use their muscles instead of momentum. If this is you, if you're constantly using momentum and you're catching yourself do this, doing this, you can, you can work on fixing it, of course, but also instead of doing a lot of standing movements, pick more machines or do use free weights and cables sitting down so you use less momentum. It will be way harder to use momentum when you're sitting down or in a machine. So if you wanna make it look like you lift and see better results, prioritize form and your mechanics over intensity. Once you got the form down, then start increasing the weight. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number six is only training in one rep range. So there's two main reasons for this. One's for practicality and the other is for science. So for the practical side, you're not gonna be able to lateral raise right these in the two to six rep range with good form and close to failure. Also, only training heavy is gonna have you spending a lot of time in the gym and putting a lot of stress on your central nervous system. While only training in high rep ranges can lead to metabolic acidosis. I'll put the study here if you're curious. And number two, because of science, right? Only training in the two to six rep range is the best for strength. So if your goal is to maximize strength, that's gonna be the rep range you're training in. But if your main goal is strength, you still wanna build muscle, right? Because more muscle is gonna make you stronger. And training in a variety of rep ranges is the best thing to build muscle. Study here, whether your goal is strength, hypertrophy, muscle growth, overall health, or just to look good naked, you still wanna train in a variety of rep ranges. Just make sure when you get to the end of the rep range, whether you're training to two reps or 20, when you get to the end of that rep range in a set and you finish that set, that you could say to yourself, there's no way I could have done more than four reps, right? You wanna be zero to four reps shy of failure. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number seven is warming up. Now let me say who I'm not talking to here. When you go into the gym or wherever you weight train, uh, if you're feeling a bit cold, maybe you hop on the treadmill, do five to 10 minutes of brisk walking, and then you go over to wherever your first exercise is, right? And then you do maybe two to four warm up sets, right? And then you go into your first working set of the day. I'm not talking to people who do that, right? That's smart. That's making your warm up specific to your workout. I'm talking to the people who think they need to do these crazy long 15 to 30 minute warm up routines just to be able to work out. There used to be this bullshit myth going around in the fitness industry that the, your age is the number of minutes you have to do a warm up routine. So there'd be 45 year olds doing 45 minute warm up routines, 50 year olds, etc. right? Ridiculous. However, if you have a warm up routine that's not too long and you like it and you enjoy doing it, keep doing it. I'm not talking to you either. I'm talking to people who think they need to be doing these excessive, crazy foam rolling, stretching, dynamic stretching routines before they can work out. If that's you, stop doing that right now because you don't need to. And give the warm up I described at the beginning of mistake number seven a try. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number eight is volume and frequency. And this one's actually pretty crazy, right? Because you think the more times that I go to the gym or the more that I do in the gym is gonna lead to more results when that's not the case at all. So if you're currently doing, if you're currently going to the gym six to seven times a week right now, and you're doing 20 sets or more per muscle group per week, you're doing way too fucking much right now. I get so many DMs on Instagram and emails with people saying, hey, can you review my workout routine right now? And they send it to me and it is exactly what I just described. Not only is this gonna put massive stress on your joints and your central nervous system, which is gonna lead to overtraining, it's not efficient at all or sustainable. The whole reason there's this thing called minimum effective volume in weight training is so that when you hit a plateau, you have room to add 
volume. So before you try doing six to seven days of weight training with 20 sets per muscle group, try going to the gym for three to five days per week and weight training, right? With six to 10 working sets per muscle group per week and actually training to or close to failure. When I say close to, I mean within four reps of failure. Give that a try, be honest with yourself, record, record your working sets so you can watch them back and see if you're actually training to failure. Let me know if you want a video on that and I'll do a video on how to know if you're training hard enough. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number nine is only doing workouts that you find on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. So we all know who I'm talking about here. If you do, guess down in the comments, I'll let you know if you're right or wrong. It, it goes over several people, but there's a couple main ones here. Now, if this is you, if I'm talking to someone who does this right now, right, if that's you, I'm stoked that those videos and those people are helping you exercise and helping you get movement in. But at some point, if you wanna see way better results and get way better results, you're gonna have to switch to more traditional weight training. When you're doing these random workouts that you find on Instagram, TikTok, or Chloe Ting workouts on YouTube, they're not gonna be effective for two main reasons. Number one, they're not gonna put any tension on your muscles or they're gonna put very minimal tension on your muscles. And without that, they're useless. And number two, a lot of these Instagram, TikTok, YouTube workouts are circuits, right? Cause that's sexy, it's fun. That's what they post. And so a lot of them are circuits style training, which is great. Like I said, if this is helping you get exercise moving and awesome, but if you want the best results possible, it comes down to doing the same four to 12 exercises. If you want the best results possible, it comes down to doing the same exercises for four to 12 weeks, progressing in those exercises and actually resting between sets. So how can you solve this? You can either hire a trainer, a coach like myself or others out there, or you can find a free program online from a uh, respectable source that you can follow for a while that's not different every time. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number 10 is doing HIIT classes, boot camp classes, or group fitness classes. Now, Orange Theory and F45 are what I'm talking about here. That I mean, that's the most popular things near me that fit this description. Now, I'm gonna get very specific here. Is this great for overall health? Absolutely. I'm stoked you're exercising. And if you enjoy this style of working out, keep doing it, but, if you're doing it because you think it's gonna help you build muscle and lose fat, stop doing it immediately and start doing traditional weight training. And if you wanna lose fat, that's one of your goals. Start tracking your calories and protein to ensure that you're in a calorie deficit and you're eating adequate protein to sustain your muscles and to build more muscle. Again, this will help you lose fat by burning some calories, but no, it's not the most efficient way at doing it. What I just stated is. One more time so no one gets triggered. If you like the positive community, and the overall health benefits of these classes, keep doing them. But if your goal is to build muscle and to lose fat, to look more toned, to look athletic, to look better naked, stop doing this. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number 11 is running. Doing cardio is killing your gains. I'm completely kidding, that's a, a joke, a Jeff Cavalier joke. But what it actually is, it's similar. It's believing that the only effective form of cardio for you is the most intense one. And what this leads to is once that motivation fades to do that cardio, let's say running, you stop doing it altogether completely. That used to be me when I was 16 with running on the beach. I did it for a month, would run three to five miles every single day, and then after the month, done and then pick it back up in like six to 12 months if later. If this is your current problem right now, there's such an easy solution. Go on a walk or start biking. Do low intensity, steady state cardio. Both of them are effective and sustainable. Think about this. It's a month into running. You don't wanna fucking run. You are tired. You don't wanna do it anymore. How are you gonna keep forcing yourself to keep running after that month? And on the opposite end, it's the end of the day, you haven't done any cardio yet, and let's say your only requirement for yourself is to go on a walk or go on a bike ride. It's a bit fucking easier to convince and force yourself to go on a walk or go on a bike ride than it is to force yourself to get up and go fucking run. Also, you could reward yourself while you bike or while you walk if you're not outside. If you're, if you're on a stationary bike or you're on the treadmill, 
you can watch a, your favorite movie, your favorite TV show that's currently on. You can watch YouTube videos like this one or listen to a podcast, uh, maybe read a book if you don't get nauseous while you're moving and reading. And rewarding yourself for doing good habits, good behavior is amazing. That's gonna make you more consistent. Again, I'm not hating on running. Sometimes I go on runs still, but make sure that your baseline cardio routine is something that you know you can force yourself to do 80 to 90% of the time, even and especially when you don't fucking want to. So I saved the best two or the most important two mistakes for last, 12 and 13. Mistake making it look like you don't lift number 12 is deciding to lose weight first and then lift. I've had people comment, DM, email me about this all the time. I'm gonna lose the weight first and then lift. What are your thoughts about this? This is such a big mistake. Why would you wait until you lose the weight to start weight training? Starting weight training when you decide you wanna start losing weight in the first place is gonna help you a heap ton for three main reasons. Number one, weight training is gonna help you build muscle during that fat loss phase, right? Which is gonna increase your metabolism, but also make you stronger, make you feel better, and make you look better. Number two, during that entire fat loss phase, you can either be building and strengthening a habit or not doing shit, or building and strengthening a bad habit, which is not going to the gym, right? So you can be building and strengthening the habit of going to the gym three to four times a week, or building and strengthening the habit of skipping the gym every day. And number three, I don't wanna harp on this too much because this is not the focus of lifting weights, but the accumulation of six months of going to the gym three to four days per week, the calories burned in those section sessions, that is something that's noticeable. That is significant. Obviously, there's many more benefits than that, but those three alone should make you decide to start lifting when you wanna lose the weight instead of losing the weight first and then start weight training. All right the biggest mistake making it look like you don't lift. Mistake number 13, I saved the best for last. It's not being subscribed to this YouTube channel. All right, but seriously, if this video was helpful to you and you want more no bullshit tips on training and nutrition to help you lose fat, build muscle, and increase your confidence, go hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and I'll talk to you soon.